So it's been a long and bumpy road, but I finally got there and got this uh, multi-material hot end working. So it's um, it sinks input and I can still use it like a normal mixing hot end and do multicolor prints with the same filament. But now I can also print um, pretty much any other filament. I haven't found one that I can't print yet. So I can do high temperature filaments um, like carbon fiber, nylon and um, flexibles like TPU uh, and switch between them. Um, so this actually is my first uh, multicolor print. It's um, it's just a demo print but arguably it could be useful um, as a, as a um, an anti-vibration motor mount. So the uh, the grey base plate is ABS uh, Polymaker Polylite ABS and the upper plate is uh, Polymaker PA6CF which is carbon fiber nylon uh, which needs to be printed at around 300 to 290 I think I used and then in between the two is a flexible which in this case is um, polypropylene and um, because of the orientation of the plates I had to use support so that's four different filaments um, in fact I used PLA as well but I'll come to that later so it was actually five filaments so I have to confess that polypropylene wasn't the best choice because it didn't stick well to the ABS and I had to cheat and stick it back together that's not a fault with the hot end that was my choice of materials if I do another one I'll use TPU instead of polypropylene so here's a, here's a quick picture of the completed part still on the build plate with the breakaway support okay it's not the best quality I've got a lot of refinement to do to find the best settings for each filament um, all I did was pick the mid-range temperature that Polymaker um, suggested for their various filaments and then um, I just slowed the speed down by 50% for the flexible and everything else was basically what I use for PLA so retractions and all that they all need to be adjusted and uh, tuned for each individual filament um, but I've got macros set up that I can I can put specific parameters in whenever I change from one filament to another so I've done plenty of videos on this channel about how I uh, arrived at where I am by way of a recap this is a, um, a six input hot end with two heat zones it's liquid cooled and can use any M6 threaded nozzle uh, which can be changed with one hand. So the upper heat zone, what I call the combining block, um, I'm running at about 210 degrees. So all, all the filaments are loaded all the time. Um, that combining block will never get above 210. So um, none of the other filaments will get cooked even when I set the, the lower block which is a nozzle block um, I can set that up to like 300 plus and it still the other filaments won't see any more than 210 um, the heat breaks that I use for the filament input inputs are PTFE lined throughout well, you can't normally do that if you want to print a high temperature which is why people use all metal hot ends the reason is that PTFE will degrade over about 220 but in this design of mine, they never see more than 210. So I, I got the advantage that I can print high temperature filaments, but still use low friction PTFE lined heat breaks. Essentially, the, the process I use to purge out, uh, to, to switch between one filament and another, is to use the new filament to push the old filament out of the nozzle. So all six filaments are loaded as far as the combining block and then there's another heat break and then it goes into the nozzle block so essentially the, what I do is firstly move the print head to the back of the printer and I have a purge chute with a silicon rubber strip on the front for wiping the nozzle so I position the, uh, the print head over that and then if the new filament is to be temp printed at the same temperature or higher than the old one I just need to set the temperature, wait for it to reach temperature and then purge some filament through and it will push out the old one. I'm currently using a 100mm 
to purge, but that's way too much um, because I only need to shift what's actually in the nozzle block. So probably 20 mil would be more than enough. Um, I just need to play around with that. It might need to be different for each filament, but um, I'm purging a lot at the moment unnecessarily. So once the, once the, uh, the new tool is up to temperature, then I wipe the nozzle and the printhead returns from whence it was and carries on printing. If the new filament requires a lower temperature than the previous one, then what I have to do is first switch to the new filament, but before the hot end cools, purge out the old filament at that high temperature, but with the new filament. Um, and then I force cool the nozzle, so it's got a fan on it near the purge chute, which blows air onto the nozzle. That will rapidly cool it. And then when the nozzle was at the correct temperature, then I'd do another purge. Um, so I'm purging filament at the correct temperature. Um, and there's one other step that I have to do for TPU and other flexibles. And I found that um, for whatever reason, I can't push something like ABS out using the flexible filament, regardless of what temperature I use. Um, it's just too uh, it's too viscous and um, it just the extruder just chews on the filament it's too much restriction so basically what I do with when changing from a high temperature rigid filament to a flexible like TPU or polypropylene is to first purge your nozzle with PLA um, and then purge it with the flexible so the PLA will push the ABS or CA6PL or whatever it was out of the nozzle and then the flexible can push the PLA out without any problems at all. It sounds like a lot of purging which would be wasteful in terms of time and filament but in reality it isn't. As I say at the moment it's quite high because I'm using 100mm but in reality I probably only need 20mm just to what's in the nozzle. You might notice some continuity issues here because uh, having watched the video back I realised I kind of uh, missed a chunk out so I'm uh, recording this on a, on a different day. But essentially what I didn't make clear was that all the purging and the heating and cooling of the tool and all that stuff um, happens automatically. Um, if I want to run a multicolour print I just open the file and hit print and everything happens or I can walk away and come back and there's the multicolour print is done at the end of it. So all the uh, the moving of the tool and the heating or cooling and the purging and all that is taken care of in the tool change macros that run whenever you change a tool. So the Duet firmware takes care of all that. I just had to tell it what to do um, for each tool. And uh, so now back to the original video. I, I did a video of this print as it went but unfortunately I had to keep the booth doors closed um, because of the nature of the filaments I didn't want any drafts and I need to keep the humidity in that booth low so I had to film it through the polycarbonate doors of the booth so there's a lot of reflections um, and I took some shots of the, the laptop I'm using as well so there's a lot of lights and reflections off of the screen so so the video won't be very good, but at least it will give you an idea of uh, what goes on.
So on the subject of multi-material printing, um, I mean, essentially there are there are pros and cons of whatever method you use. Um, you can either um, use something like a tool changer, like E3D's tool changer or variation of the Jubilee or something like that. And I, I guess one of their main advantages is that the tools don't have to be printing tools. So you could, for example, use a, a cutting tool um, or a, a pick and place tool or something. Um, but if we're just talking about 3D printing, then you obviously need a, a separate hot end for each filament that you're going to use. And each hot end is going to need its own heater, its own uh, temperature sensor and its own nozzle and everything else. Um, and you need some docking mechanism uh, and somewhere to park the tools when they're not in use. So quite expensive and quite complicated. Another approach would be to use something like an IDEX, which has two independent X carriages. You have one tool on each, but you're, but you're limited there to um, just two tools. So uh, it's not really an option if you want to do more than two. Uh, and then the other approach, I guess, is something like um, the Prusa multi-material or this Enrage Carrot Rabbit feeder or whatever the hell it's called um, <laughs> uh, what a ridiculous name um, where you basically have one hot end um, and then you change the filament that's going into it um, one of the downs one of the, well to me one of the downsides of a tool changer uh, or an idex or anything like that is that um, where you when you're using multiple nozzles you've got to get the X, Y and Z offset between the nozzles exactly right so that you, you still print in the same, in the right place. So using a single nozzle, to me, is uh, favourable in that respect, um, which is where something like an MMU or a, or a bunny hopping, whatever it is, um, filament changing device, uh, probably scores. But they seem to... Um, uh, they seem to work by retracting all of the filament that's being used and then loading another one and that I don't know how reliable that is um, never used one so if anybody's got any experience stick a comment down below I worry about pulling hot filament up through the heat break and and also the uh, the shape of the filament once it's been extracted it's going to have a long stringy bit on and how well does that feed in the next one or does it get cut off? I don't know. So in summary, I think my approach has got um, all the advantages of both and very few of the disadvantages, shall we say. Um, it just uses a single nozzle. Changing between tools is effectively it's the same tool. So I've just got to switch between extruders, um, which are all coupled all the time. Uh, so nothing to worry about with nozzle with um, offsets or anything like that um, because I'm not retracting all the filament and pushing new filament in it's it's faster than a than a conventional MMU type unit and I only need to purge what's actually in the nozzle block um, not the whole hot end so it doesn't doesn't waste very much filament uh, or take very long. Um, most of the <clears throat> most of the waiting time is for the um, temperature to stabilize but i use a i use an 80 watt heater on the nozzle block which is too powerful um, for normal use but it does mean i get a rapid rise in temperature i do get a little bit of an overshoot but i don't care um, if it goes up a couple of degrees more than it should and i also use a force cooling fan to rapidly cool it when it moves over the um, over the purge chute, and it's only the nozzle block at the bottom that I'm changing the temperature. The combining block stays at 210 throughout. And then, of course, I've still got the ability to combine filaments of the same temperature, so I can still do multicolor prints and and mix um, blue and yellow and get green and red and yellow and get umpteen shades of orange if I want to. Um, 
but there's also the possibility of combining different filament types if they have the same temperature so I have no idea whether that could be useful or not but for example one could print say PETG and TPU could combine the two they're both similar about 230 degrees say 90% PETG with 10% TPU I, I have no idea you could spend a lifetime exploring um, all those combinations but it's possible anyway I'm pretty chuffed with it um, yeah I've got some refining to do to, to print lots of different temperature towers with different nozzles and with and without fan and with different filaments and the same for refractions and and all that to, to improve the quality a bit but it's um, basically the fundamentals are all there it's doing what it should do um, so I'm pretty chuffed yeah yeah it's been a long and bumpy road but um, yeah I'm pretty chuffed with it so sorry this has been a while I've had a lot to do I've got distracted with um, changing the printer over to use um, a 6HC as an expansion board to replace my two 3HC boards which meant quite a lot of printer modifications I had to modify the frame and do all sorts of things and I've also been distracted by getting the humidity control working but I'll do a couple of videos on that if uh, anybody's interested so uh, yeah I mean um, let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you very much bye oh and yeah big shout out to uh, all my supporters it's i'll put links below to my paypal and patreon accounts um, all donations very gratefully received especially um, as things are at the moment with energy costs and pensions and <laughs> uh, generally tight finances so um, yeah anyway till next time